Hi everyone, I'm Chloe. And before we dive into this crazy story, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales of unexpected chaos and how I navigate through them. Now, let's get into it. Living in a quaint two-story house in the suburbs was a dream come true for David and me. We had tied the knot not too long ago, and were soaking up every blissful moment. David, a skilled software developer, and myself, working in the bustling world of advertising, found solace in the quiet moments we shared at home. It was our little haven, away from the world. However, David's mother, Nancy, has always been a bit of an overstepper. But with a heart of gold, she means well. But let's just say she doesn't always hit the mark when it comes to boundaries. When David and I planned our two-week getaway to Italy, a trip we had been dreaming about since we met, we needed someone to look after our place. Naturally, Nancy offered. And we, perhaps a bit naively, accepted. David, are you sure about this? I mean, your mom is great, but you know how she can be, I said, a bit hesitant as I zipped up the last of our suitcases. Chloe, it'll be fine. Mom knows how much we value our space. She's just going to water the plants and pick up the mail. What could possibly go wrong? David replied with a laugh, completely unaware of just how famous those last words were. As we handed over the keys, Nancy beamed with pride and assured us, Don't you worry about a thing. Go and enjoy your vacation. The house will be just as you left it. Little did we know, Nancy had her own interpretations of house-sitting. The day before our return, my phone buzzed with a notification from our home security system, a feature Nancy didn't know about. A motion was detected at the front door. Curious, I opened the live feed only to see a young couple dragging suitcases up our front porch. David, why are there people with suitcases entering our house? I asked, my voice a mixture of confusion and concern. That has to be some mistake, Chloe. Maybe Nancy invited someone over to help with something? David suggested, trying to rationalize the irrational as he peered over my shoulder at the screen. We spent our last night in Italy, not with excitement to return home, but with a growing dread of the unknown. What were we coming back to? The day we returned, our quaint sanctuary had turned into a bustling Airbnb spot. Our living room, once filled with intimate photos and memories, was stripped of its personality, looking more like a generic hotel room than our home. Nancy, what is going on here? I managed to ask as we stood, bag still in hand, in what seemed like a parallel universe version of our living room. Oh, Chloe, David, you're back. How is Italy? Look, I've been thinking about your mortgage and figured this could help. These nice folks are renting your place for a few weeks. Isn't that great? Nancy said, her voice full of pride and oblivious to our shock. Great? No, this was a nightmare. Our private sanctuary had been invaded, our belongings moved, and our trust in Nancy shattered. This was not what we expected to come home to. Pulling into our driveway, the sight of an unfamiliar car sparked the first wave of confusion. David and I exchanged wary glances. Neither of us had anticipated this greeting. Stepping inside, the surreal reality of our situation set in. Our cozy living room, once adorned with personal photos and trinkets of our travels, now resembled a page out of a generic home catalog, impersonal and cold. The sound of laughter drew our attention to the corner of the room where a group of strangers lounged comfortably on our sofa, chatting and sipping wine as if they owned the place. My heart sank. This wasn't just a simple oversight. This was a full-scale rental operation happening right under our roof. As David and I stood there, dumbfounded, Nancy breezed into the room with a smile. Oh, you're back early. Did you have a nice flight? She asked, as if we had just returned from a quick jaunt to the store. Mom, what is going on here? Why are there people in our house? David's voice carried a mix of disbelief and frustration. Well, I thought I'd help out a bit. I listed your place on Airbnb to make some extra money for your mortgage. These folks were looking for a place, and I figured, why not? Nancy explained her tone casual, as if she'd merely decided to lend out a seldom-used hand tool, not our entire home. Nancy, you can't just rent out our house without asking us. That's our private space. Our home, I interjected, the irritation evident in my voice. The privacy we so dearly cherished had been compromised, replaced by the unsettling feeling of being strangers in our own home. The guests, picking up on the tension, awkwardly began to gather their things. We're so sorry. We had no idea. One of them muttered as they passed by, 
clearly embarrassed by the mix-up. Understanding their predicament, David and I knew we couldn't just turn them out with nowhere to go. We're going to sort this out, David assured them. We'll cover your accommodation at a nearby hotel for the duration of your stay here. I could see the relief wash over their faces as they thanked us. Coordinating with a local hotel, we arranged for their stay, ensuring the hotel understood the unusual circumstances. Handling this smoothly required not just financial resources, which were a strain, but also a diplomatic touch, balancing our need to reclaim our home with empathy for the innocent couple caught up in Nancy's misguided scheme. Mom, how could you think this was okay? You've moved our things. Let strangers into our private spaces. How could you not see the problem with that? David continued, struggling to grasp the extent of the breach. I was just trying to help. I thought a little extra money might be nice for you guys. I didn't think it'd be such a big deal, Nancy replied, her defensive tone hinting at her inability to fully understand the invasion she'd orchestrated. The whole scenario felt surreal. Standing in the midst of our disarranged living room, the feeling of violation was palpable. Our home, our sanctuary, had been turned into a public lodging without our consent. The trust we had placed in Nancy had been naively misplaced. As the last of the guests left, apologies hanging in the air, David and I were left to assess the full scope of the chaos. The task of reclaiming our home and addressing the breach of trust with Nancy loomed large. This incident wasn't just a simple mistake. It was a profound violation that needed addressing. But how do you set boundaries with family, especially when they think they were doing you a favor? Once the couple had left, with their gratitude and apologies, the real task began. David and I walked through our home, taking in the extent of the changes. Personal items were moved, and some of our belongings were stored away to make the house more appealing to potential renters. The intrusion felt deeper as we discovered the extent of the alterations. Look at this, Chloe, David said, holding up a box from the closet that contained several of our personal photo albums and small keepsakes, items we treasured for their memories. She didn't just rent out our house, she erased our presence here to make it more marketable. The realization hit hard. Our home, our privacy, had been commodified. I felt a mix of anger and sadness, knowing that Nancy had taken liberties that were beyond the pale. This wasn't just about renting out a house. It was about respecting the sanctity of someone's personal space, something Nancy had overlooked entirely in her bid to help. We spent the next few days restoring our home to its former state, rehanging our photos, and rearranging our furniture just the way we liked it. Each step in the process felt like reclaiming a part of ourselves that had been taken without permission. Throughout this ordeal, David and I learned a crucial lesson about boundaries and the importance of clear communication, especially with family. The breach had been a harsh wake-up call to the necessity of setting firm limits and the complexities involved in balancing familial relationships with personal autonomy. As we finally settled back into our home, now secured and decidedly private once more, we knew this was just the beginning of a broader conversation we needed to have with Nancy. How to address this without fracturing the family further was the next challenge, but one we were now prepared to handle with clarity and resolve. As we sat down with Nancy in our living room, ironically, the epicenter of the recent chaos, David took a deep breath before starting the conversation. Mom, we need to talk about what happened. Renting out our house without telling us crossed so many lines. Nancy shifted uncomfortably in her chair, her expression a mix of defensiveness and confusion. I was just trying to help. I thought I was doing a good thing, helping you save up some money. Helping isn't the issue, Mom. It's the fact that you made a huge decision about our property without consulting us. That's our private space, and you violated that, I added, my voice steady but firm. It was crucial that she understood the severity of her actions. But I've always done things like this. David, you know I'm just trying to look out for you and Chloe, Nancy protested, still not grasping the breach of privacy and trust. David and I exchanged a glance, a silent agreement that firmer boundaries were necessary. Mom, understanding or not, from now on, you won't have a key to our house. We need to know that our home is our private space, and we decide what happens here, David stated, the finality in his voice indicating that this was not up for negotiation. We're also installing new locks and a security system, I chimed in. This isn't just about us being upset. This is about making sure something like this never happens again. 
The room fell silent as the weight of our words hung in the air. Nancy looked between us, hurt evident in her eyes, but it was a necessary pain. Boundaries had to be established to prevent future overreaches and to protect our autonomy. Nancy finally nodded, a reluctant acceptance of our new rules. I just wanted to help, she murmured, a hint of resignation in her voice. We know, Mom, but our home, our rules, it's important that you respect that, David replied, his tone softening slightly. It was a delicate balance, maintaining family ties while asserting our independence. With the decision made, David and I spent the next few days upgrading our home security. Installing new locks and setting up the security system felt empowering. Each click of the lock and beep of the system was a reaffirmation of our control over our environment. As the dust began to settle from the recent upheaval, David and I found ourselves in the quiet aftermath, reflecting on everything that had transpired. The breach of our privacy and trust by Nancy had tested us in ways we never anticipated. Yet, as we navigated these troubled waters, we discovered a deeper strength within our bond. Sitting together in our living room, now restored to its familiar warmth and security, we discussed how this ordeal had reshaped our understanding of family and boundaries. Chloe, I never realized how hard it could be to set boundaries with family, but I see now how essential they are, not just for our privacy, but for our peace of mind, David remarked, his hand finding mine as a sign of solidarity. I nodded, feeling the weight of his words. It's one thing to know you need boundaries, and another to enforce them, especially with someone like Nancy who's always been so involved in your life, I replied, squeezing his hand. This situation had indeed forced us to confront uncomfortable truths about autonomy and respect within family dynamics. Though the new rules had initially hurt Nancy, over time, she began to understand the gravity of her actions. We had several conversations, some more difficult than others, where we explained our perspective and our needs. Gradually, Nancy started to respect our decisions, and acknowledged the importance of asking and respecting our boundaries. This shift was not just about correcting a single mistake, but about fostering a healthier, more respectful relationship. The impact of this ordeal on our marriage was profound. Adversity has a way of either breaking or solidifying relationships. And for us, it was decidedly the latter. We had supported each other through the chaos, communicated openly about our feelings and plans, and emerged more united. David's unwavering support during those moments when I felt overwhelmed was a testament to his commitment, not just to our marriage, but to our shared values. We've come out of this stronger, haven't we? David mused one evening as we relaxed in our finally peaceful home. Absolutely, I agreed, feeling a surge of pride and affection. No matter what comes our way, I know we can handle it together. Our home, our rules, our sanctuary, it's ours to protect and cherish. Ensuring that our home remained our haven became a top priority. The new locks and security system were not just physical barriers, but symbols of our dedication to safeguarding our life together. They represented our commitment to maintaining a space that was unequivocally ours, free from unsanctioned intrusions. This chapter of our life, while filled with unexpected challenges, taught us invaluable lessons about the complexities of family relationships and the crucial role of boundaries. With these lessons in mind, we looked forward to a future where our home would always be our sanctuary, undisturbed, sacred, and a testament to our resilience and unity. As we moved forward, it was with a renewed sense of confidence and assurance in our ability to face any challenge, together, as a team. That wraps up our story, folks. How do you think Chloe and David handled the situation with Nancy? Could they have approached the boundaries differently? Or was their response justified given the breach of trust? Drop your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more content. Your support helps us keep bringing these stories to life.